up guys? So we got the, the 1048 off. Um, it was not performing the way we wanted it to. I actually cut this diaphragm spring so many times, I actually ended up cutting it in half and the pop-off rate still wasn't there. I didn't measure the pop-off rate. I was just cutting and cutting and cutting to see if we could do anything to get to that point. And I came to the conclusion that that's not going to work. Um, I believe the, the number of check valves inside the carburetor either is not enough for high and low jet or the one that they're sharing isn't large enough to support both when both were trying to draw mid-range um, to get that fuel demand that we need. It sucks because you know it's 0.8 millimeters larger than the 668 um, which is a 12 and a half or 12.7 millimeter Venturi when this is a 13 and a half which is a it's a big one but unfortunately this carb I was using on that diesel engine that I was running two-stroke on diesel I, I was like let me see if this carb will bolt up and it did and then I ran some gas through it and then I was like let me see if I can run on diesel and then I was a diesel video I did purge it with gasoline before I put it on the scooter and then I just primed it just now and we're going to see if this thing will start and see if we can get a, a quick base tune going. Where's my little screwdriver? I lost it. Not me pocket. Oh there. I'm just another unprepared YouTuber. Here it is. first. Alright. Full juice. It already starts easier than the uh, the other one. I'm gonna, I just cranked the idle way in just to see if we can get this thing to run for a little bit. Um, and then we'll pull the idle back out and get this thing to idle. Way too much fuel on down though. There's no bog. The throttle response is there, so we're gonna keep going until we get twenty thousand or more, and then see what happens when we put a load on it.
Well, we're down like 200 RPM. That's about it. So with this carburetor being more responsive, um, rideability should be a lot better, I hope. Um, because before I get on the throttle, I'll just eat it until I got up in front of the power band and it would actually run. Um, as soon as the sun comes up, or if it comes out tomorrow, it's supposed to rain. Um, I'll put this, you guys back on there and we'll see what the loaded RPM is gonna be. Um, judging by the throttle response and how much better the fuel delivery with this carburetor is, I have a feeling it's gonna be, um, the loaded RPM might be a little bit higher. I could be wrong now, um, but, but that, that's why I'm kind of doing this. I want 35 mile an hour out of a hard tire spindle driven go-ped without going over 700 on the spindle size. And I'm actually kind of willing to downsize the spindle size to maybe 675 to help the engine get there better. Because this thing, I think it's signing off on power at maybe 13,000 RPM, but it's just carrying itself to 15,000. So like any dyno chart you look at, you know, you always have peak power somewhere and then, you know, before you get to your rev limiter, you, you fall back down a little bit. Since this thing isn't limiting itself, um, we have a limit somewhere. That's a, a friction of literally everything at that point, I would imagine. Um, so yeah, tomorrow, I will be more happy to ride it since it'll be daytime and you guys can see all that and how it works. But yes, the 668's back on and uh, see where it takes us. See you guys tomorrow. This is our last run with the bike. We're gonna clear it zero. Thingy. 31 2. I'll be losing mile an hour. Well, it's just 31 2, but I seen 16.5 on the thingy. We gotta do it again. Let me reset this. Let's go.
throw me off of it, guys. That only says 317. That's weird, I'm slower now. I'm getting a higher RPM, but I got less mile an hour. So I just did a couple runs on this thing. It's up on the bench cooling off. I need a bigger radiator for sure. Um, I've seen 16,800 on the clock. Um, highest I've seen so far, but my GPS saying I'm going slower. Um, I'm not sure how to, uh, sorry, it's cold here, test the accuracy of that. Maybe I'll get on my Honda Grom and ride it because I know it's accurate. And then pull that phone out and see if it's accurate. But it's not the perfect day outside, so I don't know if the mild little bit of cloud coverage would really affect that. Um, but it, I'm getting a higher engine RPM. So I think 15.7 and I'm at 16.8. So that's 1,100 RPM more. So there should be a higher mile an hour. Unless my spindle's slipping. Which I doubt. Um, anyway, you guys seen it. It's a wheelie machine and now it's filthy. As soon as I can figure out where I'm going to mount my pipe bracket on this. It's either going to go from here to here or I'm going to take advantage of these two bolts down here and then tie it in there because it's I wrote it once but it seems floppier than doo-doo and it almost feels like the pipe the expansion chamber is too big since we lowered the compression or I mean raised the compression we lowered the cylinder volume so the signal to the pipe isn't the same so I believe with higher compression motors you need smaller chambered pipe because it's not producing as big of a signal due to less cylinder volume less explosion could be wrong I could be wrong that's probably why this pipe performs phenomenally well because it's small and small displacement. I mean, you normally see pipes this size on like a 50cc dirt bike or bigger. So that came with a scooter that I bought, so I haven't had anything to put it on except for that. Um, so yeah, kind of weird why my mile an hour is slower and it makes me wonder if my thing's been accurate this whole time. If you guys know of any apps that you use that are accurate, that are worth paying for, let me know. I will buy it just to use it just for this scooter. I feel like I'm close to 35 mile an hour on this thing, the way it is. Um, it is super stable now with the beadlock. However, it is super sketchy at the power band because it wants to throw me off of it. Literally wants to throw me off of it. But you guys seen that, so. That's it for today. Um, let me know what GPS apps you guys use and know that are consistent. Um, so I can get one because I want to use it for that thing as well. And then we'll go through all the speeds of everything that I own as far as GoPeds. See you guys next time.